The lower the mass, lower the energy. E equals mc squared, right you guys? And hopefully that gave you a little more of a visual approach to how atoms come together and bond. The overlap of atomic orbitals to share electrons is the molecular orbital, okay? Okay, so that was MO theory, and that did a pretty good job explaining how bonding occurs. But let me tell you the other theory we have on bonding, orbital hybridization theory, so you can get the entire story, okay? Okay, you guys, so MO theory, molecular orbital theory, this was a good theory because it helped us start seeing how bonds are formed. You overlap atomic orbitals to share electrons so you can form a bond between two atoms, right? And this was really useful for when we looked at things like hydrogen, right? Because with hydrogen, we had, say for example, one hydrogen, we drew its s orbital. Hydrogen doesn't have p orbitals, right? Because it only has one valence electron. So, hey, we just draw the s orbital for that hydrogen. Okay, and it can bond with another hydrogen by overlapping their atomic orbitals, their s atomic orbitals, right? So hey, what happened was these hydrogens overlapped in this overlapping region. That's where the electrons were being shared to form a covalent bond, which is why we could draw this like this to show that those two hydrogens bonded together, right? Okay, so for hydrogen, this was all well and good because hydrogen only has s orbitals. So we can see very, very clearly that the s orbital of this hydrogen and the s orbital of this hydrogen can overlap on top of each other to form this bond. But when we get to more complex atoms, anything with more than two valence electrons, which is like what we're gonna be dealing with, then this is a very disturbing concept because when you look at another atom such as say uh, carbon, Okay, so carbon has six electrons in it, right? So it's going to have an s orbital as well as p orbitals. So let me go ahead and draw in this guy's p orbitals. And remember, it's going to go top to bottom, right to left, and back to front. And this is in three dimensions, right? You guys, up and down, left and right, and back to front, okay? Okay, so if you look at carbon, for example, this is a lot messier than if you looked at something like hydrogen. Hydrogen only had an s orbital, so it was very clear cut. You look at this hydrogen, he only has an s orbital. You look at this hydrogen, he only has an s orbital. So they overlap their s orbitals to form this bond. No questions asked, right? But hey, when you look at carbon, this carbon not only has this s orbital on the inside, he also has a p orbital going up and down, left to right, and another one going back to front, right? So the question is, which orbitals is carbon going to use? Because he's got electrons in all of these orbitals, right? Which one is he going to use to bond? Okay, so let's just say that this carbon is going to try to bond with another carbon, okay? So let me draw another carbon up here. Okay, so here's a carbon. Here's his s orbital. Let me draw his three p orbitals. So there's one going up to down, the other one going left to right, and then this one going back to front. Okay, and if you're getting confused by all these pictures and all these lobes and everything, don't stress out, you guys. Remember, this is just that 3D drawing that we saw before of the atomic orbital. So remember, when we graph the math equations to uh, get the atomic orbital, then remember, we can have an s orbital that looks like a sphere, or we can have a p orbital that looks like lobes, right? Okay, and all these are, you guys, are graphed out equations of where the electrons are gonna be. These are the atomic orbitals, where electrons are. Electrons are in this sphere, or electrons are in these lobes, right, you guys? And the strategy behind bonding is to get these orbitals to overlap with one another to share electrons and form a bond, right? So up here, I'm showing you two carbons, right? Each with their own s orbital and their own p orbitals, right? p orbital going this way, p orbital going this way, and a p orbital going this way, right? We're trying to get these carbons to overlap their orbitals so that they can bond, okay? But okay, we're saying it's very, very clear cut if you only have an s orbital. You know what orbital you're gonna overlap. You can only choose to overlap this s orbital and this s orbital to make this molecule, right? But for something that has s orbitals and p orbitals, it's like, hey, which orbitals are, going, are you going to use, you know? So, hey, you might be thinking, all right, well, 
hey, this carbon, he's got a p orbital that's going this way. This carbon, he's got a p orbital that's going this way. Maybe we can just have those p orbitals overlap with each other to form a bond. So, hey, let's just pretend that these p orbitals overlap with each other and form a bond. And hey, in that intersecting part right here, this is where a bond is gonna form. So you can think, okay, so maybe this is gonna look like this then. This carbon is gonna form a covalent bond with this carbon by overlapping this p orbital, right? Okay, you guys, so if this still looks good to you, let's add another bond to this carbon and see if this pans out doing things this way, okay, by just having these p orbitals overlap with each other, okay? So, hey, let me go ahead and draw in another carbon molecule down here. Okay, so here's another carbon. There's his s orbital. And let me draw his p orbital overlapping with this guy's p orbital. Okay, and you're thinking, all right, cool, Garrett, we just overlap these orbitals. This area of overlap is where the electrons can be shared and you can form a bond. So now that this guy can look like this, a carbon bonded to that carbon on the right and now this carbon down here. But hey, guess what you've done, you guys? You've just made two bonds like this at a 90 degree angle. These two bonds are at a right angle to each other, 90 degrees, okay? And what this means is, is that if you choose to overlap p orbitals like this, then you will always have to bond at 90 degree angles. And you just saw from VSEPR theory, that there's three basic shapes with three different types of bond angles. 109.5 degrees, 120 degrees, 180 degrees, right? None of which are 90 degrees. So you know that, hey, you can't make bonds like this because there's a bunch of different compounds with a bunch of different types of angles besides 90 degrees, okay? Okay, so you know that one thing that's funny that's going on here is that these p orbitals are bonding at 90 degree angles. And you know that our three basic shapes bond at 109, 120, and 180 degrees, right? So you know from those three basic shapes from the, with those three basic bond angles that you can't make 90 degree angles like this. This kind of bonding is not appropriate. Okay, so the second thing that's funny that's going on here, you guys, is that look at this s orbital. This s orbital looks like it's trapped on the inside behind all of these p orbitals. How is this carbon supposed to use its s orbital to bond with anything when all these p orbitals are protruding away from it? Like, hey, how can like another hydrogen or something come in and try to bond with this, you guys, when all these p orbitals p orbitals are blocking its path, okay? So, hey, this is the second funny thing that's going on and we're gonna explore this in just a second. All right, so let me erase this and we'll talk more about orbital hybridization theory. Okay, so orbital hybridization theory, all this is, is it's just a theory to explain how orbitals overlap to form the shapes of compounds that we observe, okay, with those characteristic bond angles, all right? So, hey, let's write that down. Orbital hybridization theory, all this is, it's just a theory to explain how orbitals overlap to form the shapes of compounds that we see. Compounds that we see. Okay, so we use this to explain how we get tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear shaped compounds, okay? So, hey, what exactly is orbital hybridization though? Well, hey, you know what an orbital is. It's those sphere and lobe shaped regions where you find electrons, right? But what's hybridization? Hybridization just means a mixture of things, a combination. Like, you guys have all heard of the civic hybrid, right? Okay, so the Civic Hybrid is a car that Honda makes that runs on gas and electric power. It's considered a hybrid because it combines those two energy sources, gas and electricity. So a hybrid is just a mixture of things. But hey, what does hybridization have to do with orbitals? Does this mean that we're gonna be mixing orbitals? And yes, you guys, that is exactly what it means. We are gonna be mixing orbitals. Because hey, did we say that all orbitals are the same? Or do, orbital comes in, or do orbitals come in different types? different types, right you guys? We saw S and P orbitals, and they came in different shapes, spheres and those lobe-shaped things we saw, right? 
So orbital hybridization involves the mixing of those two different types of orbitals. We're going to be mixing spherical s orbitals with lobe-shaped p orbitals to make spherical lobe-shaped hybridized orbitals. All right, so I got a joke for you guys. What do you call an s orbital mixed with a p orbital? An sp hybridized orbital. <laughs> okay, so hey, that wasn't very funny, but it wasn't even a joke. But I just wanted you to learn something. When you mix s orbitals with p orbitals, this makes sp hybridized orbitals. They're considered hybridized orbitals because they're made of part s and part p. Just like the civic hybrid that's a mix of gas and electricity, hybridized sp orbitals are a mix of s and p orbitals. And depending on how many s orbitals are mixed with how many p orbitals, the resulting sp hybridized orbital will look more like a spherical s orbital or more like a lobe-shaped p orbital, right? So, hey, just to get one thing straight, you guys, if you ever hear me just say s orbital or just say p orbital, I'm talking about pure unhybridized orbitals. This means that they are either pure s or pure p. They are not a mixture of s and p orbitals, okay? So a mixture of s and p orbitals is considered some type of sp hybridized orbital. It's just like saying, hey, a gas car is powered by pure gas or an electric car is powered by pure electricity, right? But if you mix those together, you get a hybridized gas electric car that's powered by both. And whoa, you guys, that was a whole bunch of words right there. So let's draw some pictures of what I'm talking about. Okay, so what did we say an S orbital looked like? What shape was an S orbital? A sphere, right? So let's draw that real quick. So remember on our 3D graph paper, we had a sphere for an s orbital. And what, and what shape was a p orbital? Okay, there were three p orbitals, right? And they were all lobe shaped, so let's draw that also. Okay, so there was one p orbital that went up to down, the other one went left to right, and the other one went back to front, right you guys? Okay, so these are pure unhybridized s and p orbitals, they're pure, they're not hybridized, okay? Realize that these orbitals are all from the same atom. I just drew them on separate graphs like this for the sake of clarity. If I was to draw these orbitals how they actually look like, they would all be on one graph like this. So here would be the s, then the p would be right on top of it like this, and like this, okay? All right, so now that we've refreshed what pure S and pure P orbitals look like, let's see what it means to mix these together into hybridized orbitals, okay? So, hey, what you have is you have one S orbital and three P orbitals that you can choose from to mix together. So let me erase this and I'll illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, so you have one S orbital, let me draw that right here, and you have three P orbitals, one, two, three, so this one can be the top to bottom, this one can be like the left to right, and this one can be the front to back, okay? We have three of them, okay? So, hey, you have one S orbital and three P orbitals that you can choose from to mix together. And you can either choose to mix one S with one P orbital and leave the other two P orbitals alone, leave them unhybridized, or you can choose to mix one S with two of these P orbitals, or you can choose to mix one S with all three P orbitals. It's up to you. Just remember, if you mix in more P orbitals than S orbitals, the resulting hybrid